Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Carla Smith and I have a teaching video to share with you all today. It is by Dr. Raymond Moss, an affiliated member of this channel and a friend of mine. And it is on the topic of the rapture. Now, he presents a different perspective than what most of us have been taught in the traditional church. And so I wanted to preface his video to invite you all to engage in conversation in the comment section. What is it that you have been taught in the traditional church about the topic of the rapture? Do you believe that there's going to be a rapture or do you not believe? And what does the scripture say about the topic? Amen. Praise the Lord. And so I so look forward to hearing what you all have to say and us learning from each other. Praise the Lord. All right, stay tuned. God bless. Hi, my name is Ray Mossy. I'm originally from the United States of America. God brought me to South Africa in 2006, and so I've been here ever since. I now reside in Durban. I'm a doctor by training, plastic surgeon, and that's what I do for a living. But I'm a teacher of God's Word by gift. And so today I would like to continue with a series of teachings that we started some time ago. We've had a bit of a pause in our upload of videos, so we're going to hope, hopefully, by His grace, try to uh, be more uh, consistent with our uploads of videos and teachings and so forth. But today I felt that God laid it on my heart to speak about the Church of Philadelphia. Now the Philadelphia Church is uh, mentioned in Revelation uh, chapter 3, starting in verse 7. And Jesus is speaking to various churches that are listed there in the second and third chapters of Revelation. And the Philadelphia church is a unique church in that group because there's a promise that's given to them that's not given to the other six churches. And that promise is that they will be kept or spared from the uh, time of tribulation that, that will come and test the whole world, something that's referred to as the Great Tribulation. Jesus said in Matthew 24, there will be tribulation, and he also said there would be great tribulation. So there's a separation of the two from the standpoint uh, that the great tribulation is a time of trouble that he referred to as has never been seen on the earth and never will be again. So we know that this is going to be a very challenging time. Now many Bible scholars will teach that the, the tribulation, the great tribulation, is a seven year period of time. It's not. It's a three and a half year period of time. The, um, there's nowhere in the Bible that it refers to a seven year period of time of great tribulation. It's always three and a half years, give or take. So that's something that we need to, to be sure about when we read the Word of God, that we're reading it and translating it and uh, understanding it correctly. And the only way that you can do that is if you pray to God and ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you. The Bible says that we don't need a teacher. So you don't really need me to teach you because you have the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who will lead you and guide you in all truth. So these things that I tell you are things that God has revealed to me only because I've spent time under the direction and the tutelage of the Holy Spirit in order to understand these things. And God gives me revelation on a regular basis. He gave me a significant revelation today about what's happening in the world currently and how that fits into the book of Revelation. Many years ago, God spoke to me when I was still in the United States about a Revelation. He said to me as I was about to doze off to sleep one night, I want Revelation revealed. And I said, oh, that's nice. And I started to close my eyes and go back to sleep. And he said, and I want you to do it. And I said, okay. Well, if you want me to reveal Revelation, then you'll have to reveal it to me because I had studied Revelation on and off over the years and I didn't really understand it that well and so I, I couldn't be a revelator of revelation if I didn't myself understand it and so over the next three years I spent a great deal of time studying to do the teaching that's entitled Revelation Reveal and even as of today I need to go back and revise it because God is continuing to reveal things to me about that book so what we're going to talk about today is the uh, Philadelphia Church and how it fits into these end time events. Most Bible teachers and most um, ministers of the Word today 
are recognizing the, the, the signs of the times, that we are living in the end of times. Now we don't know if it's going to be one year or 100 or 250 or more years before Jesus comes back. But certainly it could happen at any time based upon what we're seeing today because the things that are spoken of in the book of Revelation can finally, for the first time in history, come to pass. Will they come to pass at this time? We don't know. But we need to watch. Jesus said to watch, therefore, and pray always in Luke 21, that you be counted worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the Son of Man. So these things are going to be a trouble not only for the world, but for the church at large. And the only church that is given the promise to escape all these things is the Philadelphia church. What does the word Philadelphia mean? It refers to brotherly love. So the, the city of Philadelphia in America is called the city of brotherly love. And that's something that we're called to do is to love one another. But Jesus gave us a, a commission and a, a, an instruction in the, the book of John that we must love one another as he loves us, which is a greater love, an agape love, a love that's above the Philadelphia love. But the people of the Philadelphia church will be the ones who will understand the love of Christ better than the other churches and at least attain the level of brotherly love. But I also believe that they will understand the agape love or agapeo love, which is a higher form of unconditional love that Jesus loved us with, the one where we will lay down our lives for our friends the way that he did. And that sort of love is something that the world cannot understand because it's a self-sacrificing love. It's one that truly denies itself. And that's the love that I believe the people of the Philadelphia Church will have to learn to walk in. Now, the Philadelphia Church is not a church that you can join. You can't say, oh, I'm the Philadelphia Church, or oh, I want to join the Philadelphia Church. No, you have to be called into it. And it's something that's a revelation to the people who belong to it. How do I know about it? And what is my role in it? Well, God told me years ago, when I was still very immature in the word, you are a Philadelphia church. And the man who was running the ministry that I was connected to at that time, uh, his name was Bill. I went up to him and I said, Bill, Bill, God just told me that we're a Philadelphia church. And he looked at me sort of with a deer in the headlights look and said, oh, that's nice. Because I don't believe he understood uh, the meaning of what God had just spoken to me. Now, why didn't he say we are the Philadelphia church? I believe that that's because the Philadelphia Church is made up of members that are scattered across the earth and that those people are hidden ones, ones that are not really out in the forefront at this time. They're not on TV, they're not on radio, they're not um, having large followings on YouTube. They're the ones that simply do the will of God quietly um, in their own time, in their own lives, in a way that only God can direct them. And how is that different than the rest of the church? Because oftentimes I ask people who want to connect with us, do you want to serve Jesus? And the reply I get most often is, I already do. And so if they believe that, then what's the point of them wanting to join up with us? Because we are moving on a deeper level than most of the people who follow Christ. That's not to say that they aren't serving Jesus, but they're not serving Jesus the way that he wants us to serve them, him. And so that's something that is different to the rest of the world and even the rest of the church. And that's something that very few people are called to. Many are called, but few are chosen. And so one must be called into the Philadelphia church, I believe. It's not something that you can say, oh, this is what I want to do and I want to join and where do I sign up and so forth. No. You must have a leading from the Holy Spirit. The problem is the Philadelphia church is small. It's not a big church and the Bible says, Jesus says that I know your strength, that you have a little strength. And that word strength in there is translated in English from the word dunamis, which means power. So the people of the Philadelphia church will have power, but not much, a small amount. They must have very little in terms of finances, in terms of uh, dynamis power and so forth, miracle power, they will have some, but they won't have a lot. They'll have more than enough. They'll have more than enough for what they need. But they must be extremely efficient and effective with the small amount that God trusts them with 
in order that they can do the will of God in their lives and in the lives of those people that they will touch. So the Philadelphia church is a small church in number, but it's a very powerful church on a small scale. And I liken it to the, the tip of an arrowhead. So the tip of an arrowhead is extremely sharp, but it's very fragile and can be broken off easily. The Philadelphia church is not for everyone. And it's not to say that it's better than other churches. The only advantage that it has is that it, it gets to escape the Great Tribulation in its entirety. No other church, no other people will have that opportunity. People who believe in something called a pre-tribulation rapture, which is where Jesus comes back and uh, takes his people out of the earth before the Antichrist comes on the scene, are living in a, a, a dream world. That's a fantasy, it's a fairy tale. And why is it a tale? Because the fairies have told these people, it didn't come from God, the fairies have told these people that they're gonna be taken out. Why? Because they mistakenly believe that the Great Tribulation is the wrath of God. It's not. The Great Tribulation is the wrath of Satan. And it is it actually designed for the church. And if you understand the book of Revelation, you'll understand that the church is going to be refined in the Great Tribulation. It's not going to be spared, the Great Tribulation, because the Great Tribulation is given to the devil to wreak havoc on the church. And the reason that it's given to him to do that is because the church is out of order from the beginning uh, of Jesus starting the church until now the church has has gotten off track and there are many um, different denominations around the world that call themselves Christian and most of them are not truly following Christ and the reason being is because Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16, if anyone would come after me, they must first deny themselves. Well, he didn't say first, but he said they must deny themselves. So the first and most important thing of becoming a true Christian is self-denial. And in fact, the world would tell you that you need to promote yourself, that you need to look after number one, because nobody else is going to look out for number one, so you have to. And that's a lie from the enemy. So most people buy into that lie as they've bought into many other lies, including the lie of a pre-tribulation rapture, because it is an absolute flat-out lie. It's the greatest lie that's been perpetrated against the church since the beginning. And many people believe it. And many people put their false hope in that thing. And when it doesn't happen, the people are going to be disappointed that, hey, the tribulation is here, I'm not gone and they'll fall away from the faith. And that's the, the, the great falling away that I believe will happen in these end times because people have been lied to on a large scale. There's even been movies called the Left Behind series and people who have uh, supposedly have this understanding. And where did it come from? Well, it can be traced back to the 1800s, I believe, and some young girl in, in the UK who had a dream about this thing. But it's not biblical, it's not scriptural. You can pull scriptures out of context and try to build a doctrine on this concept, but it just simply is not going to be the case. The wrath of God is referred to as the day of the Lord over and over and over in the Bible. Never in there does it talk about His wrath being the Great Tribulation. Revelation chapter 12 tells us that Satan is coming down and woe to the earth because he has he knows that he has a short time. So his wrath is what's going to be meted out during the Great Tribulation. And it'll be three and a half years. And during that period of time, the true church, starting with the Philadelphia church, will be taken out of harm's way. They won't be taken out of the earth, but they'll be sent to a place that God has prepared for them. And it's spoken of in Revelation chapter 12. So how do we know that the Philadelphia church is that church that will escape? Well, because Jesus said so. It's that simple. And they are the ones, the same ones as the 144,000. Now, there are people who have built doctrines on the 144,000 and who they are and so forth. Well, the Bible tells us who they are. They're children of God in the various different tribes of Israel. There are some tribes that are not mentioned in there because they did some terrible things in the past, so they were deleted from that group of people. But nonetheless, there will be 144,000, and I believe men, not counting women and children, so there will be more than a total of 144,000 people in the Philadelphia church. And how do we know 
that the 144,000 are one and the same as the Philadelphia Church because it says in there about the Philadelphia Church that God has written his name on their foreheads. And 144,000, it says the same thing about them. So we know that they're one and the same people. And why do they get to escape? Because they've learned to walk in love. And they've been persecuted now. And they've learned to change and transform into the image of Christ through the persecution and suffering that they've done before the tribulation. So they don't need to go through the Great Tribulation because they've got an A going into the final exam, therefore they can skip the final exam. That's fundamentally what it's about. So the Philadelphia Church is something that God has told us in the Bible about. It's something that is very clear in the scriptures and it's something that is going to become more evident as time goes on. And if you're listening to this video then hopefully you'll hear what God is saying to you and let these words change you and go to God and repent and, and stop doing your own thing and stop saying whatever you want to say because the Philadelphia church will be a, a church of people who have become perfected in Christ and we know that perfection is true because of the words that come out of their mouths. They're not going to be saying things that are not true. Whatever they say they'll keep their word and if they say something in error they'll repent quickly if they do something wrong they'll repent quickly and repentance is not just saying you're sorry and going back to doing the same thing you were doing before repentance is saying you're sorry from a, a broken heart and doing something different turning away from that sin turning away from the, that error and it takes steadfast hard work day in and day out to come to this place and that's where God is taking us. And it's challenging and difficult and few people can do it. Most people will quit because it's hard. It's extremely hard. So the, the great news for the Philadelphia church is they get to skip out in the Great Tribulation. The rest of the church is going to go through at least part, if not all of it. And there will be people who are Christians who will die in the process. Many will be put in prison. And these things are being set up right now. Why? Because the devil, it has been given to him to do these things. And God told me that the other day. It has been given to them. So there's nothing we can do about it. We can't pray it away. And the times are set. And there's nothing we can do about it. The only thing we can do is pray and ask God to help us to change so that we may be counted worthy to escape all these things. Jesus said that's an option. He told you that in Luke 21. So it's up to you. If you want to be a member of the Philadelphia Church, then you need to ask Jesus. Pray and ask him. And he said to pray always and to watch. So we have to watch. We have to watch the news. We have to watch what's happening in the, in the world. We have to watch alternative news platforms. We have to read for ourselves what's going on and ask God for direction. If we do that, then it's possible that we may become perfected in Christ before the Antichrist comes on the scene and the New World Order takes its, its uh, foothold in the earth. It's only going to happen for a short time, and then after that, God's judgment will come. What will happen to the people then? Well, I believe they'll already be out of harm's way, and God will carry out and mete out His judgment as the day of the Lord, starting with the sixth seal. The fifth seal, spoken of in the book of Revelation, is the Great Tribulation. It's the Tribulation and the Great Tribulation. It will crescendo into the Great Tribulation and it is for the Church and the people of God will not escape it unless they have first washed their robes clean in the blood of the Lamb and done so voluntarily before the trouble comes. And that's the difference between the Philadelphia Church and the rest of the churches. So watch therefore and pray always that you be counted worthy to escape all these things and maybe God will draw you into the Philadelphia church as well. God bless you and thank you for listening.